In distant lands, where snow defies the sun's intensity, where dense jungle can suffocate even the atmosphere, where cold blue waters run deep, where sand whips across the open desert landscape, nature's survivors prevail. These, the wildest animals on Earth, once roamed vast, uninhabited territories. But now, they are often confined by civilized encroachment. Spanning five continents, life in the wild explores the amazing and sometimes brutal rituals of the animal kingdom in their natural habitat. Watch cunning predators as they stalk innocent prey. Observe the remarkable balance of speed and sheer power crucial for a successful kill. Learn the strategy and struggle for mates and territory. Witness the fierce battles that occur between giant beasts as they strive to further their species. Come, be a part of this extraordinary journey into life in the wild. In this first hour, we journey to Africa and the untamed world of the Kalahari Desert. The elegant Maasai giraffe of the Serengeti powerful elephants of Cameroon's Waza Park. The amazing rhinoceros of South Africa's Kruger National Park. And the colorful chameleons of Madagascar. Then onto the foothills of the Himalayas in northern India, where the tiger is king of the Corbett National Park. In this desert landscape, there's no escape from the relentless heat of the sun. Any creature who underestimates its power can be doomed, brought to its knees, destined to perish. This wilderness offers no refuge. The only chance of survival in its unforgiving environment is a source of water, if you can reach it in time. Exploring this waterless terrain may be risky, but it can quench a thirst, a thirst for adventure. This is the wild sanctuary of the Kalahari Desert in South Africa. Our arrival is greeted by the symbol of Southern Africa, the springbok. The springbok lives up to its name. They can leap seven feet into the air while racing along at 40 or 50 miles per hour. It seems as though these animals never stop running from one green pasture to the next. The oryx, a species of antelope like the springbok, is superbly adapted to life on the open plains where speed is the key to survival. It's now six months since the last rains this is a time of complete drought. One million square miles with dried up rivers, sparse scrubland, and desert. The birth of the Kalahari Desert goes back 180 million years. It was then that the original land masses were subdivided to form Africa, India, Madagascar, Antarctica, Australia, and South America. The area here was left to the sun and the wind. All water was virtually driven underground, and only red sand, colored by iron oxide, remained on the surface. The day is drying to a close, and the animals are beginning to suffer in the afternoon heat. The sun has been on their backs for too long. They head for the shelter of the nearest acacia tree, with its fanned-out branches offering a cooler refuge. In its shade, 
the temperature has dropped to a mere 104 degrees. Even so, some residents still spoil for a fight, whatever the temperature. The scorpion prowls the desert floor for supper. He is quite prepared to take on a lizard three times his size. The lions of the Kalahari are amongst the world's most beautiful. Their coats are the rich color of sand and their bodies perfectly proportioned. Because they live in such hot conditions, they carry hardly a surplus ounce of fat. Their solid muscle is made all the more obvious by the lion's relatively small stature. Lions can breed all year round, but mating occurs at different times in different places. Courting pairs often demonstrate what appears to be a great affection between each other. Females mate from age three or four. Cubs are born 15 weeks later. The lioness releases glandular scents to stimulate the male. Although mating can be painful for her, it's the most important activity to ensure the survival of the species. This neck and ear biting may look aggressive, but in fact it's not. It's a trick played by the male to pacify the female. Both remember that as cubs, they had to lie still when their mothers picked them up by the neck. During the mating season, the lion may mount her as frequently as once every 20 minutes. The lioness is only receptive again when her cubs have reached two years old. The lioness always rolls on the ground after mating. She is also the provider of food. The males will provide protection. The mating season is long past. Now's the time for the cubs, offspring of the fertile and active Kalahari lions. The park is home to more than 250 lions, all divided into separate prides. Each pride follows the seasonal migration of grass-eating animals to stay within easy reach of their food supply. The relationship between the lion cub and the big male is an important one. A father has to be familiar with the scent of its offspring. If a male takes on another herd, it will often kill all the cubs it hasn't fathered. But whatever its relationship with its father, the cub has no doubt at all who's boss, his mother. It's she who can be affectionate playmate one minute and strict disciplinary in the next. The lionesses often stay together for many years and will suckle one another's offspring. A silverback jackal. Normally, it eats rats, mice, and fruit, but today, it scented the lion's kill. Lion cubs start to eat meat at the age of three months, and by six months, they'll be completely weaned. For the first year, they'll be allowed to live off the pride and enjoy food without having to make any of the kills themselves. The silverback jackal is getting impatient. He knows the lion must stop eating soon. Normally, there's a pecking order to the scavengers when the Kalahari lions have finished their meal. When the lion abandons its kill, there's a hierarchy to observe. First, the hyenas taste the leftovers, then the jackals, and then the vultures. But this jackal isn't one for protocol. He wants to get in first and try to hide his pickings before the hyenas arrive.
The question is whether he'll get away with it. Gutsy he may be, but does he have the strength to carry the meat away before the hyenas catch up with him? Already, the hyenas have the scent and are in hot pursuit. How long can the jackal risk staying there? Not long. The hyena is not a creature to tangle with. It has a very powerful jaw with teeth that can crush bones. It is also very strong. The hyena is a skillful scavenger. It can digest the skin and bone left behind by other animals. They eat six pounds of meat a day. They live for approximately 25 years. The mothers give birth alone and will rejoin the pack after a few months. The cheetah is just waking from his afternoon nap. He's hungry, preparing to set an ambush. With a top speed of 63 miles per hour, this superb hunter is the fastest and most agile of the big cats. With the help of another cheetah, the antelope is quickly dispatched. The kill is shared by her family. Small in stature, the cheetah must stay on the lookout for larger predators who often muscle in on her success. This is one of Southern Africa's most unusual birds, the dark chanting goshawk. The birds of prey have kept close to this somewhat peculiar looking tree. The tree itself is dead, and its apparent foliage is really a collection of nests. The birds use the trees as a nursery, a kindergarten for their young. The nests are the handiwork of a bird the size of a sparrow, the busy weaver bird. The weaver birds are so sociable that they gather in large groups when the time for nest building begins. They appear to be building together, yet in reality, they're building individual homes. The males do all the work. The female's choice of mate is made after she's visited the nests and decides which one she likes. The males will stand outside the nests they have built, trying to entice the females to enter. If the male doesn't find a partner, he will destroy his nest and build another one. The entrances to the huge apartment block face downwards. There is a disadvantage to this communal construction. The whole edifice can become sodden and collapse after a heavy downpour of rain. An opportunist, the pygmy falcon, has been watching all the hard work. There's ample room for her to find board and lodging there for her and her chicks. The pygmy falcon doesn't build her own nest, but happily moves into the sociable weavers. It's an example of the assassin living as his victim's tenant. Lizards are a supplement to the pygmy falcon's diet, but its preferred food is still the weaver. The pygmy falcon has other tricks under her wing. Not only is she a murdering squatter, she also belongs to Birdland's version of the oldest profession in the world. She was happy to entertain one male, while others waited patiently for their turn on the same branch. The seamy side of the Kalahari Park. And all this in full view of the meerkats, who've now decided to warm their fronts.
Cheetahs, their energy sapped by the heat, are looking for food again, observing the movements of their favorite prey. Antelopes, fearful of their enemy the cheetah, stir themselves at the sight and sound of distant thunder on the horizon. They cape a land, part company with the antelope, and move away as a family, as if to assemble for the big event, the inevitable rain. For the first time in months, the spring box can nuzzle. Not the usual dust bowl, but the gradually advancing puddles of water. The rain creates spring fever among the spring box. This stiff-legged leaping display is done to attract females. It's called pronking, and it shows off the white hair on its back. The desert fennec foxes, normally only active at night, are brought out by the sound of thunder crashing about their huge ears. The lions stay alert. They know their food supply will be on the move. At the beginning of the heavy rains, all the grass eaters migrate northwards. The lions sense this and know that their hunting will pick up considerably. Already the growing cubs can practice the tactics they'll use to break the neck or the back of their first prey. Although playful now, a young lion will claim about 30 victims a year during its 30-year lifespan. The young female lions are approaching the time when they will hunt for themselves. Most will stay in the pride, which generally contains lions which are related to each other. The three or four males who control the pride are probably brothers, but are not usually related to the females. Males not controlling the pride will live on their own in bachelor groups, where they will have to hunt for themselves, again, mainly at night. A lion's top speed can match that of a zebra, but it cannot keep it up for long. These two are practicing the hooking technique, which will bring down a gazelle. And those claws, although retracted now, will in action be extended to rip and slash. The Kalahari lions have survived the drought, and now they're ready to leave for the hunt. The sanctuary has seen all seasons. From rains to drought, and drought back to rains. Life in the Kalahari must go on forever. The day dawns beneath a spectacular African sky. This is no cultivated landscape. It never will be. Not as long as mosquito and tsetse fly thrive here in the wet season. This is a wilderness, home to millions of wild animals. This is the Serengeti Park. Situated in Tanzania, the Serengeti Park reaches to the boundary with Kenya. It stretches 5,700 square miles. A long line of wildebeest scurry across the open ground of the savanna, nose to tail, following each other's scent. For several millennia, Wild herds by the thousands have systematically made their move with a change of season. Fleeing from drought and pursued by countless predators, the wildebeest crisscross the Serengeti Park in their search for wetter ground.
the flight of the wildebeest is only interrupted by periods of rest. It's as though the rhythm of life in the Serengeti is dictated by their great migration. It's a relentless stampede in which each animal must keep up with the herd or pay the price. A moment of hesitation by a single beast, the creature falls and is trampled to death under the hooves of wildebeest, each weighing over 500 pounds. In time, the herd comes to rest. Hundreds of wildebeest have stopped to feed on lush savanna grass covering a plateau of lava. The unmistakable rear view of a zebra. But what kind? The species of zebra can be identified by the black pendant effect on its coat and by counting the stippling on its tail. Not that a lioness cares that these zebra belong to one of five big families of the wild equidae. These are grant zebras, and there's a danger during this rest period. Constant alert is essential. Predators lurk high and low. The lioness is faced with an army of zebra. She makes her choice quickly. The attack begins. Using her claws and weight, she prevents the zebra from kicking. She pins him down and goes straight for the throat. She bites deep into the neck, closing the windpipe, until finally, the animal loses consciousness. Death lurks everywhere in the savanna. Lions hunt mostly in the morning or late afternoon when it's cooler. The hyena has scented the kill. A great opportunist, the hyena sees how close it can get to a share of the lion's booty. But the lioness is in no hurry. Others must be patient. Like the vultures, perched above the scene, waiting their turn. The Serengeti lions are the pride of the park. Some are long-maned, others short-maned. Some are tawny, others reddish-brown. Many believe them to be the finest in the world. Recently, more than 3,000 were counted here. At last, the lions are satisfied. Now it's the turn of the vultures. Bouncing down for dinner, there is no time for etiquette. The beaky head and neck of a griffin vulture has a special way of eating the parts Serengeti lions cannot reach. It is as though the vultures are eating their last ever meal. There won't be much left for other park predators by the time they've finished. After two hours, the scavengers will have stripped the zebra to the bone, leaving only the stripy coat intact. Almost. In another part of the Serengeti, the elegant Maasai giraffe, surveying the world from his treetop height, 17 feet above the ground. Quick and nervous, the Maasai giraffe is alert to just the faintest hint of a human presence. A finely tuned sense of hearing gives advance warning to impending threat. Up until 1961, when this region became a national park, warriors from the Maasai tribe still roamed here. In those days, the giraffe was held in great esteem and even then remained unharmed. Today, the creature carries the tribal name. The Maasai giraffe fears no one. With a single blow from its hoof, it can smash a lion's skull. The giraffe has only 20 minutes deep sleep every 24 hours. But even then, there are disturbances to interrupt its rest. The traffic, particularly the juggernauts, can be a real problem. Another master of the Serengeti awaits, the leopard. Noted for its famous spots, the leopard is a skilled hunter. 
Combining agility and strength, this solitary hunter uses camouflage and cunning to ambush its prey. Taking down an antelope larger than itself, the leopard bites at the windpipe to cut off the air supply. And he patiently waits. In this way, the victim can't cry out to other predators, such as the hyena. The leopard uses its immense strength and climbing ability to hoist its prey up a tree, away from other predators, for its own private feast. While in another corner of the park, the miracle of life eclipses the tragedy of death as another wildebeest enters the world. To survive, the wildebeest must protect their newborn young from lurking predators. But nature helps in small ways. Birthing usually occurs during the hottest part of the day, when predators are least active. Sometimes, birth is synchronized within the herd so that the predators are simply outnumbered. Nature also designs that a newborn calf, like this one here, can stand in six minutes, walk in ten, and even run with the herd within a half an hour. Of the monkey family, the baboon is one of the most extraordinary members. As it lopes after prey, it has no fear of animals larger than itself with the exception of the lion and the leopard. In the Serengeti, antelope are thick on the ground and provide a ready source of food for the baboons, a feast at any time of the day. But keep an eye open for competition. The baboon is no silly monkey. About three feet in length, they weigh 110 pounds with powerful arms and legs. The Serengeti captures the heart of Africa. It is here the hunter and the hunted play out a drama. In this, East Africa's Serengeti, the last great wildlife refuge of the African plains. Waza is the first animal park reserve established in Cameroon. It was created in 1934 to save the antelope and giraffe. But Waza is more. Its 656 square miles are saturated with animal life. Waza is the raucous breathing of an antelope, which has escaped unharmed from a crazy race between a lion's teeth and the mad destruction of men. Waza is the silhouette of an elephant trying to merge with the sun. A vulture soaring aloft on currents of warm air and on lookout for food for dead and dying animals. From a rock high up, he spots a herd of elephants, the pride of Waza Park. There are at least 50 adults. Amongst them and in the forest are several newborn calves hidden by their parents' legs. They arrive at the water hole. Water at last, and at least three baths a day are needed. A baby elephant, it's a female. When it takes its first bath, it sticks close to its mother. The matriarch of the group is on patrol. With a martial tread, she reviews the party. 
Further off, two young males are sparring, testing each other. The struggle will soon turn into a shower session with trunks. The upper part of an elephant's trunk contains a crest of skin and muscle shaped like a finger or plug. The elephant closes off its trunk with his plug after drawing in water or dust, aims the pipe of its watering can, pulls back the plug on its trunk, and the sprinkler sprinkles. The elephant can carry out the most delicate maneuvers with the edge of one agile and gentle foot. It makes cakes of dust, which its trunk inhales with one powerful breath. The elephant always carries the soil of Africa on its back. The giraffe is the tallest guardian of the forest in the Waza Park. With its head above the foliage of the trees, it spends its entire life here eating the leaves as the elephants pass by on their way to the grassy plains. For a giraffe, drinking means doing the splits. But the elephants are coming through in serried ranks. One young warrior puts on a show as noisy as it is ineffectual. The dignified giraffe simply steps aside. After the rainy season, in the Waza Park, baths of rich mud coat the elephants' bodies. As it evaporates, it protects their skin from the sun and from parasites. The baby elephant learns quickly, but these little legs will need to overcome greater obstacles yet to come. Elephants suckle their young until they are three years old. The mother has two teats. Since birth, she has taught the baby to turn her trunk around so that her mouth can press against her teat. The giraffes have come here merely to drink before going back to the forest. This entwining of necks only appears to be gentle. The males test each other's strength by pushing and swinging sideways. It's rare for really violent blows to be exchanged. A pecking order is established by these mock fights. Thompson gazelles. Their presence is the surest guarantee of the equilibrium of the life cycle of the Waza Park. Males establish territories up to 300 yards across in which they mate. Rival males may lock horns, but injuries seldom result. As long as the vegetation remains abundant, there will always be an excess of gazelles to ensure the continuation of the species. The tail of the Thompson's gazelle whirls about excitedly. It fans its rump, batting away insects, and gives the signal to depart.
This elephant isn't resting. It's been injured. Its look of exhaustion contrasts sharply with the great Paka strength of the rest of the family. This elephant has been wounded by a poacher's bullet. It can use only three legs. The rest of the herd continues with its mud baths. But the wounded elephant finds it too difficult. Time will pass, but its fate is inevitable. The rest of the herd must continue on their journey to the grasslands. They leave the injured one behind, another victim of life in the wild. Since the days of the Roman Empire, Africa has been a hunting ground for animals. They have been killed for food and trapped to become exhibits in zoos and circuses. Today, they are protected in wildlife sanctuaries like this. The Kruger National Park. Situated in the northeast of South Africa, the Kruger National Park was created in 1898. It was Africa's first game reserve. Since then, many other wildlife sanctuaries have been established throughout the continent. The giraffe project above the savanna scrubland like long, willowy branches. The rhythm of their movements is controlled by these slender necks. Directly out of prehistoric times, having undergone only a few minor alterations to its bodywork, here is the second largest mammal on Earth, the white rhinoceros. The white rhino is the same color as its black cousin, but probably got its name from the African word vite, meaning wide, a reference to its mouth. A peaceful animal, the white rhinoceros rarely charges. They have keen hearing and sense of smell, but poor sight. They mark their territorial boundaries with a powerful stream of urine. On this African land, nature has found a use for everything, even dung. The dung beetle rolls a large ball of dung into which it deposits its larvae. Even at rest, the lion is always on the lookout for food. And nothing is too small to interest the greedy lion. A foolish creature has wandered into the lion's path. This is the slow leopard tortoise. It realizes its mistake and retreats into the safety of its shell. But this time, it isn't safe enough. The crunch of those lion's teeth on the tortoise's shell is equivalent to 20 pounds of pressure per square inch. It's a picture which forms part of the daily life of the park. A large, solitary male elephant. The 
the trumpeting of the elephant corrects a commonly held belief. Here, the lion is not king of the animals in either weight or numbers. There are more than 7,000 elephants in this sanctuary, as opposed to only 1,500 lions. The elephant's restlessness electrifies the park. They can be extremely destructive, uprooting trees to satisfy their appetite. They regularly endanger other wildlife in the sanctuary. Scared, a little monkey sucks its thumb like a baby. Its mother sensibly grabs the baby and takes him to safety. A mountain of flesh rises up out of the curtain of grass. It was his desire to mate which was making the big male so frustrated. The lush grass is the food they like best. Adults need about 500 pounds of food a day. They spend most of the day tearing up the scrub. The Kruger Park echoes with an overpowering bellow from the gray males. The older males tend to live solitary lives, but young bulls join bachelor herds when they are about 12 years old. Female elephants usually conceive during the rainy season and are generally only fertile for a few days every four or five years. A refreshing bath helps keep them cool and also maintains the suppleness of their skin, which otherwise would dry out and crack. Although its name literally means river horse, the hippopotamus is closely related to the pig. Hippos spend most of their day in water or mud. The mud protects them against parasites and also protects them from the sun's rays. Their skin would dry out under the sun and they would dehydrate otherwise. The hippopotamus live in small groups consisting of one male and several females and their young. Woe betide any jealous neighbor who might cast an amorous eye on another's harem. The Senegal Jabiru is often witnessed when things sometimes get a little rough. Although once the conflict is over, it all seems to have been a bit too strenuous for some. Young hippos are in danger from the crocodiles. But their mothers will repel the attackers ferociously. The Nile crocodile reminds visitors to this wildlife sanctuary to be even more careful. Several years ago, to satisfy a bet, a tourist went for a night swim in the river. He never returned. The crocodile's eyes are seldom bigger than its stomach. An adult goes for the hind quarters of an antelope just above the top of the leg. This causes jealousy amongst others. On the riverbank, baboons are taking advantage of the most wooded area of the park. There are more than 5,000 of them. This joyful disorder is only a deceptive pretense. Everything is perfectly organized. A large male is in command 
and is directing the movements of his troop. The females occupy themselves with the youngsters, removing lice from their fur. During the first two weeks of their lives, only the mothers are allowed near them. If one of them should die, the female does not accept the death, but continues to carry it around in her arms for several days. Social grooming is often used as a way of diffusing a tense situation and enables members of a group to remain calm and peaceful when close to one another. Vultures earn their reputation as scavengers. It takes them only 40 minutes to consume about 400 pounds. Squabbling over the pickings is common. These two forget the food. A cloth of feathers covers the table. The beak becomes a lance. A foot pedals frantically in the air. The marabou is also a scavenger, helping to keep the ground free of decaying carcasses, which could spread disease. Africa gave up a portion of its continent to the sea. Separated from the mainland by a deep trench in the ocean floor, an island of lush rainforest with exotic creatures was created. The isolation of the island made a safe home for hundreds of unique species. A paradise of animals, had been born, the wild sanctuary of Madagascar. Located off the southeastern coast of Africa, this island of 23,000 square miles is the home of the famous Indri. Here are some of its cousins, the ring-tailed lemurs. During the mating season, the males wave their bushy tails in the air as a gesture of aggression. Lemurs have a highly developed sense of smell. They live in thinly wooded areas. The ring-tailed lemur passes the time playing or basking in the sun. An alarm sounds. There's a snake close by. A boa has slid silently onto the branch of a tree. In spite of the foliage screening it, the ring-tailed lemur has spotted it, and it continues on its way. Although the color and size change with the different varieties of lemur, almost all have a monkey-like appearance with long tails and muzzles like a fox. The snake, a good guide, leads us to a unique mammal found only in Madagascar. Six inches of bristle-covered body, at least one inch of this being its snout. This is the streaked tenric. Above in the trees is the Indri. 
it disappears as quickly as its cry. The boa is perfectly camouflaged. Two stick insects have left the safety of the twigs to mate on a leaf. They are now exposed to the full view of any predator. sanctuary of Madagascar is the chameleon's kingdom. Fifty species live here. They vary in length from two inches to two feet. sixteenth of a second to reach out, a quarter of a second to retract. Here it is in slow motion. Intimidation is an essential requirement for the chameleon. Endowed with horns or an impressive armor, inflating its lungs in front of its enemy in order to appear larger. Darkening when angry, the chameleon seems to be a creation of fiction rather than reality. Even when it is drinking, you get the impression that it is deliberately stretching out its tongue just to scare you. The cry of the Indri rings out. On its balcony of trees, this legendary creature is definitely playing hide and seek with the camera. This forest is home to many birds, including the stately turtle dove. There are 125 species of birds unique to this island. Many have abandoned seeds and fruit in favor of insects. Here at the heart of the forest is one of the rarest birds on earth, the Madagascar serpent eagle. Its name is a mistake, for it's neither an eagle nor does it eat snakes. It prefers insects and lizards. These are the Vero Sifakas. They live among the taller trees where they are agile movers. On hot days, they will sleep for four or five hours in the shade. Their powerful hind legs are designed for their lifestyle among the trees. Strong muscles propel them up. and across. They live in family groups of about eight. Each group defends its own territory. On the ground, their strong hind legs make walking on all fours difficult, and so they bounce along in great bounds. proficient. They can leap 30 feet with remarkable accuracy. Now 
it's more than 113 degrees in the shade. The heat has become suffocating and clammy. Another surprise is waiting for us behind a curtain of trees. Flying foxes are hanging from branches like washing on a line. They moisten their wings with saliva to keep cool. The flying fox is one of the largest bats in the world with a wingspan of up to five feet. They eat flowers and fruit. The older males stay on the outskirts of the group on the alert for predators, such as snakes. Flying foxes sleep during the day and become active toward dusk, when they will set off in search of food. The river leads us towards the home of a rare tortoise. This is the striped tortoise of Madagascar. These two will live for a hundred years or more. And when you're together for that length of time, there's no need to rush if one wants to mate. And the other doesn't. A kingfisher like an arrow pointing at a target, unintentionally discloses the mysterious creature sitting in the tree. We have found the kingdom of the Indri. The size of an adult Indri is about the same as a five-year-old child. It can keep up its baying for hours, constantly repeating its ghostly, piercing, whooping sounds. The big prehensile toes on the Indri's feet allow it to take on a remarkable sitting position. Its tail is almost non-existent. Unlike other lemurs, Indries reside in family groups high up in the forest east of Madagascar. In the forest, the lemurs are still dancing. For the moment, the wild sanctuary of Madagascar is their home. It may not be a sanctuary much longer. Against a snow-capped backdrop, Corbett National Park is truly magnificent. Covering an area of just 200 square miles, it is nestled in the foothills of the Himalayas in northern India. The Corbett Park was set up in 1936 to guarantee protection for the tiger. Ironically, it was named for one of the greatest tiger hunters and naturalists of his day, Jim Corbett. Today, it is jealously guarded and protected. 
two-thirds of the park stay closed to the public. Once inside the park, it doesn't take long to find the animals. Everywhere, there's activity. On the ground and in the thick, dense jungle, creatures are about their business, regardless of the stifling heat and suffocating atmosphere. Everything is on its guard against one animal in particular, the tiger, lord of this particular jungle and part of a singularly large tiger population here. Nothing stays still for long when the tiger calls the tune. All of the animals take refuge in their own particular safe havens. Even the corbett crocodiles with their decidedly no-nonsense mouths take to the water. These are macaques, a familiar breed of monkey in the corridor. Notable because some have short tails, others have no tails at all. But when it comes to preening, they're as vain as any bird and spend long hours concentrating on their makeup. In fact, to watch a macaque monkey about the business of grooming is to give new meaning to the term nitpicking. Monkeys have always loomed large in Indian legend. In one of the more exotic epics of mythology, the Ramayana, the monkey is a king. According to the fable, the monkey was put on earth to grace sunrise and sunset with his presence. An ancient Indian prophecy has it that as long as monkeys dance on the branches of trees, the earth will continue to turn and its creatures will continue to thrive. The short-tailed macaques certainly keep up the eternal dance in the branches of the trees. Wherever we go, there are macaques following, swinging, playing, or simply moving to where they can better observe intruders. All this in a daytime heat rising to over 110 degrees in the shade. Even the heat cannot stop their hectic activity. Since monkeys are regarded as sacred in Indian legend, they have no fear of humans because they feel no sense of threat. On the Ramganga River, the gray heron is renowned for its fishing skills. It can stand stock still for minutes, waiting for supper to come into range. Its rivals keep watch. The competition for fish is fierce. The presence of young Asian otters is an indication that there's plenty to catch, both for a calculating egret stalking among the boulders as well as for the young otters. The otters may appear to be playing a game, but they'll quickly snatch an unsuspecting fish from under the beak of a fisherman, if they get the chance. All's fair on the Ramganga River. A mother watches patiently from the bank. Her charges romp and tumble in the shallow water. In the middle of the game, one of the Asian otters makes a beeline for a particular spot. And he's got his breakfast. Another day is over. There's still no sign of the elusive tiger. But the elephants are looking uneasy. They're going back to the forest. Like an omen, a shaft of light is cast across the trees, as though something is about to be revealed. It is. Behind the vegetation of the Corbett National Park, the tiger is sheltering. The Corbett tiger is an elusive beast. All the other animals are uneasy when they suspect his presence. The Entellus monkey beats a hasty retreat up to the top of its tree. There it sits and watches out for the tiger, helping itself at the same time to tidbits. Indian folklore has a story. It's said that when the Entellus monkey's ancestors saw a tiger for the first time, its hair stood on end. It stayed that way ever since. Today, the subject of many legends itself, the tiger is at peace. 
it keeps a wary eye on the intruders only yards away from its hiding place. Then, nonchalantly, it yawns and contemplates a snooze. Hard to imagine that this could be ever regarded as an evil man-eater. The Corbett National Park tiger is a specimen of great beauty, much admired and sanctified by the Hindus as the sacred animal to transport the god Durga. Such is the respect it is now afforded in the park that it barely feels threatened. Male tigers can weigh up to 600 pounds. They live for about 15 years, spending much of their time in the shade and hunting mainly at night. A hundred years ago, there were 40,000 tigers in India. The population fell to 1,800 in the 1970s. But now it's on the increase again since the sanctuaries were created. Tiger prey on deer and antelope. A herd of deer grazing in the undergrowth is about to come face to face with a killer. Some are let go. Then some more. The deer could outrun the tiger if necessary. A few more make their escape. And then the last. The smile of the tiger is inscrutable. It has decided against a kill. Maybe no victim had been singled out. Maybe it wasn't hungry. Either way, no creature was going to stand and argue with the king of the Corbett National Park. Another long day dwindles into night. Animals, so often celebrated and idolized in mythology, face the harsh realities of survival, dependent on the brutal whims of the strong and powerful. But that's part of the raw magic and mystique of the Corbett National Park.